Hi everyone, it's Mackenzie and I have another Make With Me Wednesday video to share with you. We are continuing with the theme of One Sheet Wonder uh, templates and I did a poll last week asking which designer series paper we should use for my next One Sheet Wonder design. So the poll was fairly close, but the Lights Aglow Specialty Designer Series paper won out. So I have some of that paper here. I've been using uh, some of these designs from this pack of paper for some other projects. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but it's such a fun pack of paper. It's a specialty paper because it has that gold foil design. So I hope that shimmer shows through on the camera. And there's lots of fun designs. So the front side has all of that gold shimmer on there. And then the back side has some nice subtle patterns with some really beautiful colors, perfect for Christmas time. And uh, it's a six by six size. So that is what we'll be doing for this one sheet wonder. And let me show you here. This is the card that you can make. So I used the vanilla and gold, kind of like a snowflake starburst pattern to make this card and I cut the designer paper into little strips and then glued them on a panel. And if you use four strips of the designer paper with this template, you can make three cards with it. If you use three strips of designer paper and one strip of cardstock, then you could get four cards from this particular template. So it's up to you. You can kind of play around with your designer paper and depending on the design and the colors that you use, you can choose to keep it all the designer paper, uh, flip some over, or uh, add in some cardstock to make a bunch of cards. And again, this is based off of a six by six size, but this template that I'm about to share with you can work easily with 12 by 12 paper. You just cut it down the same way. Um, if it's easier, you can cut your 12 by 12 paper to a six by six size and then cut it following this template. Um, otherwise, I can, I'll explain more of how to trim it uh, easily, easily using that 12 by 12 size. So this is the card that we'll be making and I'm using that Handmade Wishes stamp set for the uh, sentiment on the front. So let me set this aside and bring in some of the papers that we need. So for the card base I am using Cherry Cobbler and this is eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter on that long side and then we have two pieces of cardstock one of them is soft succulent that'll be for the front the other one is very vanilla that is for the inside and both of these pieces are three and a quarter by four and five eighths and that is sized perfectly to fit these four strips of the designer paper on it with a small gap in between and then i just use that same size for the inside and depending on the paper that you are using you may want to switch up the colors so that it coordinates with your designer paper. And since my paper has vanilla, that is why I went with vanilla for the inside of my card. And then you'll need um, a piece of the six by six designer series paper and also a scrap big enough for punching. And again, this is very vanilla and that's where we'll get our little sentiment piece popped out. And I'm going to set these few to the side so I can show you how we are going to cut the designer paper. So I'm going to bring in my trimmer here and we'll be using the dark gray blade for cutting. And you'll want to pay attention to the layout of your designer paper. This one is a non-directional so it doesn't really matter which way I'm holding it. Um, but you may also, if you plan to use the back side, you'll want to make sure you pay attention to that. So this particular pattern kind of has this drapey look with the dots and stars. So if you wanted to use this side, you may want to make sure that it's facing this direction so you can get those little strips in the right orientation. I'm not using this particular side for the card today, but that's just something to note based on the paper that you use. So um, mine is non-directional and we are going 
to cut it into one inch strips all the way across our paper. And so you can use either side of the paper trimmer here. Sometimes I like to just use that right hand side and line up the right edge of my paper at that one inch mark. And then just give it a cut and we'll set it to the side. And then we'll do that all the way through for all of these strips of paper. So we'll end up with six of them at first. And I'm just kind of stacking them up to the side here. With this particular design, it doesn't matter too much if you keep the all the paper pieces in order because you can kind of mix and match them. And so right now I have six one inch strips of the designer paper. And so now we can take each of these strips and I'm gonna rotate it and cut it in half at the three inch mark. Just like that. So these are the main pieces that we'll be using. And I'm just gonna cut one more for this card because I only need four for right now. If I was making more cards, I would certainly do the same thing with my remaining strips, just cutting them in half at that three inch mark. And so if you had 12 by 12 paper, you could cut your 12 by 12 paper into 12 one inch strips. And then with each individual strip, you would rotate it and cut it at three inches a few times so that you would have a lot more of these little paper strips. And so I'm gonna set these aside and we're just going to focus on these four for the making of this card. And as I had mentioned earlier, this particular design, it doesn't matter too much if you get them out of order. All of the pieces are gonna end up the same size and you can kind of play around with where they go. And since my pattern is non-directional, I can kind of flip it upside down if I want one of these big starbursts down here and there's one over here. If you wanted to use the reverse side, you could certainly flip one of your pieces over to have a little bit more variety and uh, just kind of play around with your strips of paper. If you wanted, you could certainly make sure you keep everything in order so that pattern kind of flows nicely into all of these pieces. That's totally up to you. You have a lot of flexibility with this pattern of how you want to put it together. So we have that cut. Now I'm going to bring in my vanilla cardstock that I'm using for my sentiment piece. And I am using the Handmade Wishes. I'm just using the Merry Christmas and the little swirl on my stamp. And so I'm actually going to punch out the piece first and then do my stamping. If you wanted to use the little border design that coordinates with the punch, so here's the punch that we'll be using, I would recommend that you stamp that border design first and then you could certainly add in the words that you want to use inside of that design and then bring in the punch to punch it. That way this border lines up really well with the edge of the punch. And since I'm just using the words, I'm going to punch first and then stamp my sentiments. So you can kind of do what works best for you. So I'm going to bring in my punch and I like using it upside down so that way I see where I'm punching my cardstock and just give it a squeeze and quick and easy for that one. So we have our little sentiment piece here and then I'm gonna bring in the Cherry Cobbler ink and the ink that you use, you just wanna make sure it coordinates with the paper that you are using for your card. And I'm gonna bring in all the little stamps. So I'm going to start with Christmas since that's my big one and that's gonna fit in the middle. So we'll get that one stamped first. And then it doesn't matter which one you use next. One's going to go on top for the Mary and then the other one at the bottom. So you can kind of just line it up right where you want it to be and stamp it down. And then this little swirl, I'm going to add underneath the Christmas, just like that. And they, the stamp set is designed perfectly with this punch, and so that little swirl tucks right into that bottom area. So quick and easy for the stamping. 
now we can put everything together. So I'm going to start with the card base and fold that on that score line and then press it with the bone folder. And I'm going to take the soft succulent piece and this is where all of the designer paper pieces are going to go. And I'm going to be using the multi-purpose liquid glue. I find it's a little bit easier to get these lined up nice and straight with the liquid glue so you can kind of slide it around just a little bit to get it right where you want it to be. And so I'm going to put some glue on the back. And then I'm starting with the left hand side. And I'm going to line up my paper here and then press this down so that there's an even border on that top, left, and bottom edge of the designer paper. And press that down. And then I'm going to come over to the right hand side and do that same type of thing. So we'll get some glue on the back. And then we'll press it down on this right hand side. And again, making sure we have a even border on the top, right, and bottom side. So that looks pretty good there. And now you can do the middle two. So we'll just add more glue and pop this one down. And so now you want to have the gap between these two kind of match the border at the top and bottom. Right there. And one more piece. And this one will go right in between those other pieces. And so the border should end up being pretty close all the way across here. And then press it down. So that's that piece with all of the designer paper pieces on there. Now I'm going to bring in the stamp and seal. And if you wanted, you could certainly use that uh, liquid glue still. I'm just going to bring in the seal to run some adhesive on the back. And now this piece is going to be centered on the card front. So right about there looks good. And then we'll take the vanilla piece that goes on the inside. And I didn't stamp on it just because of the stamp set I was using. But if you are using a different stamp set and you have a nice sentiment that can fit on the inside, then you can certainly stamp on here before you glue it inside your card. So we'll just run some adhesive on the back and pop this centered on the inside. Right there looks good. And then I'm going to put the seal away and bring in some of the dimensionals. So I'm going to flip over the little punched out piece and we'll pop some of these dimensionals here on the back. And then just take off all of those little backing pieces. And make sure our sentiment's the right way up. And I put mine right in the center of my card. Depending on what sentiment you're using, you could have it centered on here. Or if your sentiment was maybe a long skinny strip, then you could just have it going across the bottom or across the top. Or if you like this design, but maybe over towards the bottom corner or the upper corner, like you can play around with where you want that piece to go. But I popped mine right in the center. And then uh, I'm adding in some champagne rhinestones. So even though this paper has a lot of shine to it already, I thought it was a nice touch adding these champagne rhinestones. And so with my first card, I kind of found some of the dots of the pattern to put some of my rhinestones. And so I used five of them on here. So if you're using the same paper, you can certainly look around and see what what areas you want to put them in. Otherwise, if it doesn't really matter, you can just kind of pop a couple on one side and another one or some three of them up on the other side just to kind of have a nice flow of making your eyes look across the whole card. And so I'm just going to grab some of these and 
we'll just kind of play around with where we want to put these little jewels. So maybe one right here. And we'll put one on this little dot. And then we'll come up to this opposite corner. And we can add one right there. And maybe right there. So there are those five little jewels on there. And so now that just adds even more sparkle and shine to this beautiful Christmas card. And you have a bunch of these strips ready to go to make more of these. And depending on the paper that you're using, you could certainly use the same design and then just add in some of the other patterns that are in the paper pack. And you could have a variety of Christmas cards that you can hand out to friends and family. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed learning this One Sheet Wonder design using a six by six piece of designer series paper. And I hope to share a 12 by 12 design later. So make sure you're checking back in and um, I hope you get making with some fun Christmas cards. Have a great day. Bye.